when I went to, uh, to college, when I went to Stanford, it was the start of the Vietnam War pretty soon after I got there. And that was not only a threat, but it was basically, even, even at that tender age, I knew it was a horrible mistake and was going to be horrible uh, you know, for, you know, for the country and for, you know, my generation in particular. In terms of being socially active, um, my best friend from high school and I, who also went to Stanford, went up to see um, the free speech movement in Berkeley just because it was clearly important and we really wanted to see what it was like and spend some time there you know, just I think a day, maybe just kind of really trying to get a sense of what this was all about. So it was bits and pieces, meanwhile trying to find out who the heck I was and trying to find what my place in the world was. I got a job as a museum guard, a temporary museum guard at the De Young Museum, and I saw what curators did, and that was clearly what I wanted to do, and uh, applied to Berkeley because I knew they had a good art history program. You couldn't not be involved in politics at Berkeley. It was the time when Berkeley was all about politics. In my second year was a seminar in art and politics taught by Peter Sells. So here we were in a seminar in art and politics dealing with various issues, and suddenly um, Suddenly Nixon and Kissinger made the decision to bomb Cambodia and the university shut down. Universities all over the country shut down and suddenly art and politics was staring us in the face. As an art major, as an undergrad, I was close to some artists, which most of the art historians were not. And there was a wonderful artist named Sally Parker who was a kind of part-time secretary in the department. And um, I said, I've got to do something. Posters were starting to be made. Um, I knew from my undergraduate years of how to make silk screens because I'd done it for my class. You know, I made posters, a couple posters for my class. So I knew how to do it. And so there I was sitting in the backyard of the house that she was renting, you know, with, I guess, a drawing board with um, an image of Saturn eating uh, his children, you know, done by Goya, next to me, basically cutting this out. And how I came up with the idea of America, America devouring its children, I can't even remember anymore, but this image was so powerful uh, as a work of art, and it's obviously one of the most disturbing works that, that uh, Goya ever did, and I loved Goya's work. It was just, somehow, it just was unnatural. And so there I was, you know, as carefully as I could creating this image. I did it myself, but basically there was silk screening going on all over campus. And there was, astonishingly enough, a frat house where there was silk screening going on. I took my silk screen into the frat house. All we had available was, as you can see in the image, was what was then IBM computer paper. That's what computers were at the time. That was the only paper that was out available. The painting, you know, Saturn devouring his children, really has a very dark background throughout. And obviously, I think I've, I, you know, I, I cropped the image quite a bit. Words are powerful symbols. You know, this image would be strong, but it basically is made, I think, by the words. I've been looking at a number of historic posters. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so it was not something that I was unfamiliar with. I knew that basically what you did with a poster is it had to be um, graphically clear. You know, when you make, when you make you know, a, a work of art, uh, you know, you're just kind of doing it. You can't think about it that much. What was interesting is that it was really happening all over campus and at the same time as making this poster, we made the decision that we were going to do an exhibition of posters that were being created. And there were a huge, it was Berkeley, there were a huge number of posters that were being, being created on, on campus. Somehow, and I had to have no idea how, um, I made the decision, you know, probably talking to, to Peter or Sells, that I would go south um, and drive down to um, Southern California and on the way, pick up whatever posters I could to amplify the show. And I got everything I could. I can't even remember how many colleges I stopped at. I certainly remember Northridge. 
Um, my guess is I probably went to UCLA. I think other people made contacts with other universities around the country mm -hmm. to get posters in. And so basically this collection started being built, but the show just kind of grew and grew and grew. It wasn't installed as a normal show, as it just was basically add-on as we would get things from other universities or colleges elsewhere, as well as what I brought back from my trip. Those were the years when the U.S. government was unfortunately, or fortunately less smart than it is now, and so the war was on television. It was the last war that was on television, really. And so we had the war, we had the TV running in the gallery all the time, you know, as the news would come through with the latest things that were happening in Vietnam, and the posters just kept going up and up and up and up. The impetus there was just basically our fury and our upset, uh, deep upset, with what this country was doing. And so that was really the impetus rather than becoming curators. I mean, yes, we kind of were aware, were aware that you know, we were curating a show, but basically only on a very, very simple level because the impetus was really political more than artistic. It's clear that what you have to do in a situation like that where you're trying to define a situation that is, you know, really bad politically uh, and, uh, and socially, that something that you make uh, even if it is just painted words, is has to be there it ha because the simple phrase is going to be powerful. What you need, um, you know, in terms of posters, is to catch people's attention, mm -hmm. um, at least with powerful with powerful simple words. Sometimes the art can basically help help define what the ideals are, and sometimes it can respond to issues, which is um, what the posters did in 1970. Finally, the universities opened after, I think they were closed a couple of weeks, as I remember. The universities opened and we went on with our studies, but we had this great satisfaction of, of you know, as, as little students, what we had done, either in terms of making posters or in terms of assembling them, and really making contacts with our colleagues at other schools. And again, there was no internet. There were no cell phones. You know, you just kind of showed up. That's all you could do. Whatever else the 60s was, you know, um, it was not a period of basically putting yourself forward. It was a period of trying to do what you thought was right. And so, you know, it didn't matter to me there was no name on it. It really didn't. The impetus was basically this horrible thing that I thought this, that our country was doing. And so the idea of, of my name being associated with, you know, who cares? And in fact, every once in a while I get, I get you know, contacted by, I got contacted by the, the Stedelijk Museum in, in uh, Amsterdam, which has a copy of the poster. And they said, well, you know, you know, we want the rights of the poster. I said, look at, you know, I said, this was made, you know, for, this is made for the public, you know, you know, just find, do what you want with it. It is what it was created for, so the idea that it's my poster, well, fine, I'm proud of it, but basically, you know, it was done for something else. So if they want to reproduce it, I mean, America is still devouring its children right at this moment, uh, you know, um, in Afghanistan. And so uh, the sentiment is still is still accurate, alas.